Tastes so good to say, ooh, yeah, yeah. Hey, baby, don't you wanna go to the cage and dance in the Zydeco? Filet gumbo and a crawfish pie. Filet gumbo and a crawfish pie. Welcome to Literary Gumbo. A continuing look at the world of writers, writing, publishing, and all other peripheral events. Uh, my name is Fred Klein. If you don't remember, I'm sort of the chief stirrer. Uh, my guest today is an old friend that I haven't seen in about six months, and she's done about 150 books and, they've, and <laughs> 25 travels around the world. And I'm just trying to get up to date on, on her, her world. You may know her. She is Marcia Meyer. Welcome, Marcia. <laughs> Thank you, Fred. It's nice good to, to be see back. you in one place. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. I, know. This, I think this is my fourth appearance. It's your fourth appearance. Yeah. But uh, between three and four, you've been around the world. I swear. <laughs> I'm just. You've got to start out just just offhand on my curiosity. Okay. I remember Santa Fe. That right. was about the last time I remember. <laughs> you you went to Santa Fe, but then you came back. I did. So I, I moved. I actually moved to Santa Fe in the fall of 2014. Okay. And I had planned to stay there, but just before I left Santa Barbara I met Rob okay. Hunter and he um, came to visit me a couple times and I came back to LA a couple times and after three months he talked me into coming back to Santa Barbara so I moved back to Santa Barbara in early 2015 okay and so I've been here since then and um, yeah and we've been we've been together since then but but you've been all over the world well, since then. Yes, well, we've but done some traveling. But before we do that, okay. for some who haven't seen the other three appearances of yours, <laughs> uh, why don't you bring us up to date on, on, on where you were at that moment okay. in, in okay. Santa Fe, your okay. accomplishments, because she is very accomplished. Oh, well, thank you very much. But um, So, well, I have been a, a writing coach and a, and a book development editor for the last about eight, almost nine years now. And so I was doing work with clients and writing my own books and yeah. I had finished a memoir that I as you know I had been working on for a long 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 time and I in 2010 I went back to school and I got my MFA in creative writing from Antioch in Los Angeles that took me two years and so in 2012 I had um, a, a completed manuscript for my memoir and um, was privileged and lucky to have uh, an agent from New York take it on and he tried to sell it for a year got lots of great feedback but couldn't find a buyer in in the big in the big houses in in New York and then I had another agent who spent another year trying to find a, a, a home for it and that didn't work and so I finally decided to come go back and revise it so I've been revising it for two years okay so but I, during that time, right? <clears throat> you wrote a very definitive book. On, I did. In well, 20, that's, well, please. In, well, that came out in 2010, so I, it was no, navigating. Now, is that still available? Yes. I mean, uh, um, do you get do you get any uh, you know uh, do you get any royalties on it? Yes, yes. In other words, <laughs> no. You sort of get, no. But what about what about getting you know to all the writers' conferences there are? You know, I mean, they're they're all over the country. And, yeah, yeah. So and it's, it's, it's because the book. What was the book called? Right, Na roughing? navigating navigating the rough waters of today's Na publishing navigating world navigating the rough waters of right. today's publishing and, and it was a very a very down to earth um, very powerful uh, as far as i was concerned explanation on what, what publishing was you yeah, know at that you. moment in time <laughs> yeah and it was it, it came out in 2010 and that was right after the implosion essentially of the publishing industry the you know the the imprints that closed and the big houses that were threatened by the rise of of self-publishing, which is even accelerated since then. You think and, so? Oh, oh wait, yeah, I think wait, so. Yeah, wait. I think so. Yeah, I think I think the publishing uh, the the big publishers are unscathed. Well, they're still doing fine, but yeah. they a lot of them let go of a lot of imprints and they let go of editors and you know. My my company still you know I merged. I mean yeah. it was it was yeah. Random House you know Knopf, now it's, Bantam, Doubleday. Now and it's now Random it's, Penguin. Now it's you know now it's uh, you know every, uh, Putnam and mm -hmm. uh, Dutton mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. everything else. Yeah. I mean, but I think in that and they process. All went, no, think, 
the thing that also amazes me is that they all still can try for a, a book. And that means they all could be aiming for Hillary, let's say Hillary, exactly. Hillary's yeah. latest book. But I think but I think in that process yeah. they focus more on celebrity books, the big books that they think can be the big the big, big sellers. And so for us for a a debut author or a, an author, a mid list author, most of those authors can't are are not even looked at by the big houses anymore. So they're doing either hybrid publishing where they're doing a combination of both or they're going to self-publishing or independent publishing. So I think that's where most most writers today are finding most success. And you can do it on um, on because you can put your book on Amazon and sell directly to your to your audience. Yeah. You you know there's a lot of self-published authors who are making good money today. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of the mid-list authors that used to make a living with the big houses and can't any longer are doing it on their own. They're now they're doing their own publishing and they're and they're doing fine too. I mean, or they're going to some of the writers I know have gone to UK publishers because they're, really, yeah, and I so was Catherine just saying to you Hyde. earlier that university presses suddenly exactly. seem to be uh, uh, yeah. suddenly publishing yeah. a lot of a yeah. lot of uh, diverse and a material. lot of a lot of the smaller presses the in independent, um, the um, literary presses and the regional presses and some of the specialized presses like the mystery presses and stuff are doing really well. But it's it's uh, but it's but because those authors, those mid-list authors and the new authors are not finding the success at the big houses like they used well, to. Well, but there's also something else which you which you talked about in your book and and that was the whole the whole idea of having blogs and Oh, of and course, yeah. Creating your own audience exactly and you have regardless. to do that now even the big houses when they take on a new author they're not putting the kind of you know money and support behind the launch of the books like they used to so you're still responsible for doing a lot of your own marketing I have an item that happened in the New York Times not too long ago that one of the publishers and I think it was Random House is now giving out excerpts at some subway stations to get people to start to, Isn't that interesting? to start reading. Yeah. And, uh, then there's James Patterson who came Ooh. up with a short shorts. Yep. You know, the yep. hundred have you seen any of those I, I haven't read them books? but I've seen I've You've seen, seen them. some of those yep. books? Yep. I mean trying to not dumb trying, down necessarily. Well they're trying to catch the, the what's become a very short attention span reading audience. Yeah, trying to so, create it seems to be exactly. create new stuff. Exactly. So and the blogs are you know if you've got a successful blog you can use that to parlay yes, yourself yeah, that into I a see, publishing that I contract. See. And, and you so had that, that in that book. You had mm -hmm. that to a yeah, certain extent. Yeah. But what I was going to tell you was that, you know, now it's been seven years since that book was published. And last year, seven I actually, years? seven years, it was 2010. Wow. So last year, I actually talked to the publisher about doing an update. Up, I would, exactly. Yeah, I would think yeah. so. So he said, send me a proposal. And I just, I've been so busy with all the other projects I have that I haven't had a chance to. But that's on my schedule. And that's on my list for well, 2017 okay. is right. to try because and get an update on I, that book. How did I introduce you as a friend? I didn't yeah. just introduce you as an editor, as an author, as an editor, as a teacher, teacher yeah. Um, yeah. as a travel, or probably becoming yeah. a travel yeah. writer. Oh, it, have you thought of? I mean, well, well we're gonna we're gonna get. Yeah, to I actually, those. have done some blogs on my travels. Um, uh -huh. I need to do more, but that's one of the things that I struggle with is finding the time to do the blog on a regular basis. Plus keep up with my books plus keep up with my client projects so all right well we now have to go back okay. we were, I've now got you at least the rough seas thing <laughs> you said that seven years ago seven so years what's ago. It? all right but you've done a number of things in in between before oh, you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> before you started becoming a world traveler again <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I was working on the memoir. I have um, a number of, I've probably, in over the years, over the last seven or eight years, I've, I think at least, my clients have published at least 15 books. Oh, yeah. Both and independently and, well, and traditionally. I've, I've, I've read some. I've, yeah, and they've and done a good job. Absolutely, so you're I right. A, I have a new I have client's book that's just out this week that we're just launching. That big, the big 670 big page book, <coughs> no, book about Vietnam. Book? It's called Shark Bait. Shark? Shark Bait. Shark a, Bait. A Flight Surgeon's Odyssey in Vietnam. It's again like about 600 pages. Yeah, it's a big, thick book, but uh -huh. it's really well done and it's fascinating and it's 
really an interesting history. Uh, anyone who's interested in military history or the Vietnam War, which of course is now at 50 years since we left Vietnam, yeah. um, 52 years now I think. And he had, uh, he's a doctor, he was an Air Force doctor who got his orders to go to Vietnam in 1966, 1966. and um, he was a, a, an inveterate writer, so he journaled every single day the whole year that he was in Vietnam. Wow. So he was a doctor who was in charge of the pilots as a flight surgeon. You're responsible for all the pilots of all the jets. And he also wasn't um, loved to fly. He, w he wanted to be an astronaut at one point. And um, just at the time that the... Um, the war. The war started, the, um, our, our um, astronaut program was decimated because they took all the money from NASA and put it into the war. And he saw the writing on the wall and said, I'm going to just go into the Air Force and then I can learn how to fly. And how old also was do. He, at this he was point? 28 when he went to Vietnam. Uh -huh. So he'd already gotten his, his degree. So he, his was doctor. A doctor. he was a doctor. He was, he was, a doctor. He was already an Air Force doctor. In fact, he, when he was He's stationed here. in Texas, he was the Air Force doctor that attended Lyndon Johnson when he came down to his ranch down oh, in, uh, in, uh, oh, in when Texas. He retired back down there? No, when he was still in, oh, he even, was still even in office. Oh, even when he, the, the winter he was the, the winter printer, White House. It was the winter White House, yeah. So he did that. So then he wrote this, um, this, when he came to me, he had 1,200 pages of manuscript that he brought me. And I helped, worked with him. Where is to, he from? How did you learn about it? Was he, is he from he was, Santa Barbara? He was referred to me through a client friend. But yeah. in Santa Barbara? Yeah, he, he lives, lives here in Santa Barbara. He's okay. the, he's the, um, he's, his name is Guy Clark, Dr. Clark. He is the owner of the uh, arthritis and osteo, Osteoarthritis Institute in Santa Barbara. He, he started it many years ago. So he still practices. He's probably 76, 77, something you know, like that. Because I get him, because you know, because of, um, of Laura, I got involved with a lot of those arthritis doctors. Yeah, yeah. So he, and he still is the doctor that the Air Force sends pilots to for uh, for physicals here from this region. Uh -huh. um, anyway, he's been, you know, here for many, many years, and and he wrote this amazing story. This and you amazing published book. it. Now, who mm -hmm. published it? You. So did. I published it through the imprint that I started which uh -huh. is called Weeping Willow Books of Santa Barbara. And so just came out this week, or uh -huh. actually came out last week, so we'll, we'll send out press releases tomorrow and get a big push going for All the city. Right. So, yeah, so and, that's you know, one so of So you the have to set up, you know, Chaucer's and yes. tackle Yes, I've already been in touch oh, with good. them. Oh, so. good, okay. Yeah, right. yeah. You know, yeah. So. Okay, so we, we've now jumped. We've to jumped today. From, yeah, we've, <laughs> jumped, we've jumped from rough yeah. waters to, to today. Yeah. Um, you, you suddenly start. You met Rob, and suddenly you start to travel. Yes. Right. Yes. So, well, so yes, and so we went to uh, Ireland in the fall of 2015 for 21 days and had an amazing, amazing trip. And that's what this book came out of. I'll talk and, about it in and, a minute. But this book re relies totally on photographs. Those are my when, photos. When, huh? They're, They're my your, photos. They're your photographs. But have you ever done photography stuff before? Only, you I know. Mean, we know your daughter is, is, is you know, is she's, very artistic. She's artistic. No, I've you. always taken photos. And so I, even when I was, even when I was a journalist, I took a lot of photos, but uh -oh. I've never used I've your never photo used Yes, exactly, uh -huh. exactly. So this was, so just to tell you, so the first photo book I did was Hard on a Fence, which came out last last summer. The reason I did this was because I was getting so frustrated that I wasn't getting anything done on the memoir. Oh. And I wanted to, and I wanted to do something creative that I could have, you know, tangible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I discovered this, uh, this company called photobook.com and they have an online software program and you go and you create, so I designed it. I did all the photos. I did. It's my poetry, uh -huh. and so I wanted to do that. So this this was the first book I did, and I got so excited about it. And then I thought I'm going to do one about our trip to Ireland. So we had gone to Ireland in 2015. And then last February in 2016, we were in France for two weeks. And when I came back, I decided to do the Ireland book. Um, 
What happened? What's happened now to these two books? Well, this this one uh, just, just came this out. This one just came out in, in uh, just a few weeks ago. This one is available on Amazon There's, and yeah, the, selling. This one has more personal right here. Yes. I, I wish it, I want you to read a couple of poems. Okay. Anyhow, okay. Try yeah. something from there because what was the one? There was Did one you want, that I one in that particular I, yeah, that you that liked. I, yes, there was one. Uh, Safe. Safe. Okay. Safe. A lot of these, a lot of these poems that ha have been written over the years. So some of them, yeah, in, I know in fact, you, you do credit uh, where some, yeah. some of them were in, yeah. in, in sort of journals or whatever. So safe is actually one of the older poems, but um, I'll read it. Safe. Safe does not ride horses at sunset. Snorkel in Molokai. Raft down a swollen river. It does not steal kisses in a darkened theater. Touch the inside of a thigh under a restaurant table. Safe does not declare war. It chooses dinner every night at six. Mass every Sunday. Confession once a month. It gives up chocolate for Lent. Safe cares only for arriving on time, doing the laundry, scrubbing the toilet, making you breakfast. Safe doesn't leave you or worry how it would make you feel if I did tomorrow. Uh, I love it. That, that. That's great. That's Thank great. you. Thank you. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. And then I'll read one more of these, really. Uh, this one's called The Scapula. <laughs> Dolphin remnant, burnished, pale, lodged between a clump of kelp and a piece of old tire above the tide line. Reminder of breath, container of organs, ridge like a fan, nature's propeller turned to art, smooth and strong as a bar as a barnacle. Now it rests upon my mantle, a simple piece of bone, hard as my mother's paddle, forgiving as the sea. And then the picture is that's the scapula I found on the beach. Uh, uh -huh. It's it's amazing. It's about this size. It's a oh, yeah. huge uh -huh. piece of bone. So so that's hard on the fence. And yes, it's the, much much more personal um, than the poems about well, Ireland. But, uh, but this is still the kind of you know here I felt that uh, in a way I was visiting Ireland. Yeah, that uh, was the intention. Yes, I, I'm sure it was. But but knowing you that I somehow I I think it it, it should be one of a series that you should be doing. I mean, I think you should do a fr one on France. I, 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 you know, I might do. I hadn't thought about France. I, you know, we're going to Greece in September, oh, so okay. that well, well, that'll wait. be my next one, probably. How come you? Know, how come you know, not the Asia, East, the Far East, or is that sometime I, in the future? You know, I don't know. Uh, well, here, let me tell you the, uh, the deal. Rob has been all over the world a ton of places and I've been barely anywhere so we're cho we're choosing places that neither one of us has been okay so right. before I met Rob I had barely been out of this country I've been all over the United States but I maybe a little I was in Toronto Canada and maybe I was a little south of the border <laughs> and I spent one month in Costa Rica that was the extent oh, of my right. of yeah, my I travel Costa Rica, right. so now you know it's like we're picking places that yeah. both of us have never been which is oh, kind of fun. so I think oh, okay. next year we're gonna probably go to Cuba which will be really cool uh -huh. Uh huh. So yeah. Actually, who has? So we know people who. Yeah, and Melinda and, and Steve have been to Cuba. Oh, they've been to Cuba, mm -hmm. but there's somebody else recently that told me they were, went to Cuba. Uh, I think it's become but now popular. you're still part of the uh, the mafia, aren't you? Still oh, yeah. writing? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now let's talk about your let's talk about your other writing and also your teaching. Okay. Uh, okay. Because I see you now have an assistant. So I do. I have a wonderful so new marketing the war, assistant. The world Thank goodness. Is ahead of you. So. <laughs> yeah. So well, I I I've hired her because I have so many books coming out in the next few months. Not just mine, but you're my own, client but books. Other clients. And so I really need some help with getting uh, the market marketing going and, and helping develop websites and you know all of the stuff that goes along with today's getting a getting a marketing plan going for a book but I have um, one of my projects that is coming out in the next couple of months I hope by the end of June uh, is an anthology of essays and poems and it's titled unmasked women write about sex and intimacy after 50 and we have uh, submissions from women all over the country, as well as Australia. How did you, how did you get the submissions? Um, put, put the word out to my um, network, but also there's an organization called, well, it's not an organization, it's actually a, an email list called CROPS. It's the Creative what? CROPS. It's Creative Writers Opportunity List. 
and um, you get it by email every day, a submission opportunities with mostly literary magazines. But I put a, a call out for submissions through the crops list, and that's how we got most of our submissions, oh. most of our contributors. So we have, I think there are 30... 29 poems and 18 essays in the book. So it's sex after 50? For women. For women. Women write about sex after 50, sex and intimacy after 50. So it's not just, it's a little bit, it's definitely a little, there's a little erotica. Uh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> definitely a little bit of erotica, but um, some really lovely pieces too, for example. Are you going to have phot photographs with it too? No. No, no. No photographs. No, you, no. but uh, um, there's a wonderful piece from a woman who is in her early 50s who has three young kids still at home and it's about how to you know how she and her husband find time for intimacy when the three kids are around oh, the house oh, and oh. so that and you know so and there's a, a wonderful piece by a friend of mine who's been single she was married when she was younger and now she's been single for 30 years and how much she how much she finds how she gets in, intimacy from her friends and her niece and her loved ones and her relatives and so a lovely that, piece so that, on that. that the Paulo book that I was talking mm -hmm. to you before mm -hmm. You know, sort of in that in that same vein. Right? Yeah, this one piece is very similar to that. And then, then, I have then you should read this past Sunday magazine section of the New York it Times. Yeah. It's devoted to couples. Yeah, interesting. And oddball sort of uh, combinations yeah. of couples. Yeah, yeah. I will. I'll go look it yeah, up. So. Yeah, yeah. So that should be out the end of June, early July. Um, and I have. Uh, oh, now that's uh, uh, most of those people are just all over the country. They're from I all mean, over the country. Yeah. And Australia. We have one person from oh, wow. Australia. So uh, several of them are from Los Angeles, a couple, some, several from here. So when we do the book launch, we'll probably bring some people in and we'll do a reading to to launch the book. Uh -huh. do it at, uh, I'm looking at, there's a um, kind of a cool gallery down in the funk zone that I think would be a fun place to have something like that. Do a book launch and have a reading and, and do it then. Uh -huh. So that's one thing. And then I've got... Um, the the shark bait book which is coming out this week and I've got um, you remember Otomodachi my other 92 year old yeah, client yeah, who had yeah. the memoir that came out two years yeah. ago well his second memoir yeah, is going to be out in the, the next month and so this this one is he was that was Japan right he was he had yeah. uh, his first memoir is about his two years of teaching in, in post war yes, Japan yes yes, yes this I book that. is about his um, subsequent uh, affiliation with an organization called the Asia Foundation which is uh, San Francisco headquartered and he worked with them for about five years and and the book is called Yuko which means friendship between nations so it's so, about his experience uh, so hopefully that organization will will get behind it I certainly hope so we're gonna see if we can get him to then wait, help, so there was help. another remember there was another one that I, that I went with you somebody who died it was writing and then and then died and then somebody else was who was picking oh, up yeah yeah story. so that's Kathleen Berry what happened to that one? that book is now we're sending that out to publishers I yeah. mean to um, agents we're looking uh, for agents for that book so that manuscripts done and we've had it revised several times her her stepson uh, uh, revised it so that took patience really to, to keep that one going oh yeah that's that's been a long process Project. So that's going. I have an, um, a new client, an old friend here from Santa Barbara, who uh, has written. Um, a, he's on his third mystery novel. Do you know who Arthur Gross Schaefer is? He's a wonderful rabbi here in Santa Barbara. No. He's a rabbi and an, an attorney and an accountant, and he teaches oh at Loyola gosh. Marymount down in L.A. But he's written two mysteries. Um, to be published? The, published? the first published? one was published by a small Santa Fe press, which didn't do much with it. So yeah. I'm going to republish it under my imprint, and then we're going to have, and the second book is done, and I've just edited a it. Mystery? So they're both mysteries. By a rabbi? Yeah, he's the detective. Oh, and he's the detective? He's the, det the rabbi is the You've detective. You've got to send it to me. I will. Send it. And then the third one, he's finishing this summer, so we'll have he'll have all three of them. I got involved with rabbis a couple of years ago. Did I mean, you? Yeah. I can't believe you somebody's, don't know him then. Some of these rabbis, well, I have nothing to do with, uh, I've not been inside a temple here, certainly in Santa Barbara, yeah. since I've been here. He's very well known in town. He's, I'm he's sure, been I'm sure very he involved I'm with sure the community. I'm sure he is. I'm sure he is. But I'm suddenly, you know, because that's, uh, that's a whole I area know you of my love life mysteries. that I've 
paid no attention to. But a, a lot, a, a rabbi that was the fastest talking guy I had ever heard. You know, just a wonderful, um, smarty, smart ass kind of guy too. Interesting. Uh, Interesting. So that yes, I, yeah. I'm sort of attra attracted to okay, that. Okay, so, kind of I'll, thing. so I'll, yeah, I'll, please, I'll send please, them to you please, to take please. a look at. So anyway, so that'll be so the those two books will but be I out think, the next I month think or so, two months. Your, your memoir, you've got to, you got to, you got to finish it. I'm gonna uh, go up. I'm going up to Sea Ranch next month for a week, and I'm gonna finish oh. it up there. Yeah, it's not almost the mafia done. Group, you're not going no, to no, this is a different group oh. of women that um, I met at you, Arojo, uh, the Room of Her Own Foundation retreat in New Mexico, oh, six, oh, seven oh, years ago. Uh -huh. And we get together every year at Sea Ranch up in Northern California. And that's why. Sea Ranch, I have an author up there. Yeah? Who is it? He, Larry, Larry. He wrote, he writes jokes. He did, he did joke books for me. He oh, did, the, interesting. You know, doctor joke books, lawyer joke books. What did I say his first name was? Larry. Larry. Oh, he and his wife, because mm -hmm. I went up I went up and visited them. It's a fabulous place. Isn't that it beautiful? Whole, that whole sea ranch oh, area. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. So this is the, this will be our sixth year up there. Right. And um, we, we, there's nine of us, so we usually rent oh, a three trek. houses. It's yeah. a trek to get up there. Oh yeah, it's about three Three hours north of San Francisco. Uh -huh. so, yeah, yeah. But, but once you get up there, and it's so beautiful, and you can walk on the beach and hike in the mountains, and yeah, Jim and, and I there's drove lots of time. There, yeah. So we all go and we uh -huh. write during the day, and then we share at night, and we have dinner together, and it's lovely. I just thought she was still part of the uh, the old. Well, I am that too. Uh -huh. We were just up at Avila last week. <laughs> oh, you, oh, yeah. Did you hear that Tony and Ned got married? Yes, I did. Yeah. No, so it was we all went Aunt Susan, she was telling yes, me. Yes, yeah. So house. we all went up the week after to oh. to celebrate with them. So uh, we were up there last week. Uh, oh, great. Yeah. Well, uh, needless to say that if I assume we've got to get together a little more than once every six months to <laughs> yes, see what I you're doing so. for God, six yes. years to see what you're doing. Yes, you I got agree. A whole, um, and, and what's the name of the press now? Willow? Weeping, Weeping Willow Books. Weeping Willow Weeping Willow press. Books. Yes, yes. So, so yeah, these are... And what you're teaching? Uh, where are you teaching? Quick. Well, I'm still I'm still doing my, um, my uh, memoir workshop with yeah. with um, it's an online group. So we do a what's called a, a, it's like Skype. We do well, a so Skype do wanna, class. Do you want to give a, a, a plug to? A well, they can to, just go to my website and, and what's your website? Yeah, marciameyer.com. M a r c i a m e i e r. Dot com. Uh, okay. And all the information's there. But um, I have, you know, right now we have three. I've had as many as six in the group. And uh -huh. uh, we they write and post in a, uh, in a, a secret Facebook group. This is, and not we talk. this is not poetry. This is not. No, this is memoir. Writing, writing. This is memoir. all memoir. It's strictly memoir. Yeah, it's all memoir. you got to so. get that memoir. I know. Out, out I will. I promise. I'm getting there. I'm getting yeah. close. I'm actually really pleased at what it's starting to look like. Really? When I, Rob and I took my daughter back to Michigan last year yeah. to visit my hometown and um, I got an, um, uh, an amazing prologue out of it because oh. so, we went back to, to, see, the, to uh, the street where I was hurt and uh, and talked about my home I saw my home my childhood home and oh wow yeah it was and pretty your, and your daughter was there Kendall too? was with us oh that was that's yeah, nice yeah, that's right yeah it turned out to be a really amazing couple of days Marcia I hope to see you within a couple months. On well, the hopefully I'll project. see you next next month when you have your the, when the, during the conference. Oh, that's right, the writers' yeah. conference. Yeah. The writers' yeah. conference, yeah, from uh, from June 18th to the 23rd. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, thank you. Thank you. We're, we're, we're done. Thank you. Great. gumbo and a crawfish pie. Filet gumbo and a crawfish pie.